God's a good God. Amen. Amen. Say that every week because He is a good God. Amen. Amen. I say God is a good God. The God that we serve. Amen. The God that we rely on. The God who takes care of us. Our provider. Our redeemer. Amen. Is a good God. Amen. Amen. And we're here today to give Him praise. We're here today to, to just give Him praise for what He has done for us this past week. Amen. We all have a story. We all have things that have happened in our life that's right is still going on right now that some of us don't know what tomorrow's going to hold. Some of us have situations in our life that we don't know what the answer is going to be. We don't know um, what the outcome is going to be in our lives. Some of us are going to the doctors and doctors are saying, hey, I, I don't have any uh, answer for you. Amen. But my God, yeah. who created us in his likeness, amen, lets us know that it doesn't matter what situation you're going through today. It doesn't matter what actually happens tomorrow. I know that when I die and I leave this world, Amen. that God's prepared a place for me. Amen. 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 And that's what keeps me going on every day. Amen. That's where my hope lies. Amen. Today, I'm going to let go of everything that's been bothering me. I'm going to let go of all the things that I cannot control. And I'm going to give God praise today. Amen. I am going to praise God. I'm going to worship Him with all my heart this morning. Amen. Are you with me? Amen. Amen. I said, are you with me? Amen. Amen. We come to church for one reason. Amen. That's to get closer to God. Amen. Amen. So today, if we can just stand and let's get ready to give God all we got. Amen. As we give God praise, the blessings come down. And I'm sure all of us want blessings, right? Amen. Lord, you're inviting me to this place today, Lord. I pray that, Lord, whatever your will is for each and every one of our lives, God. Lord, that you would have full reign for our life. Lord, you know the needs that we have. You know the desires. Lord, the situations that we're going through, Lord. Lord, bless this church, God. Bless all those that are on the way here. All those that are watching online, God. I pray, God, that you would touch them where they are. In the precious name of Jesus. Come on, church, and worship them.
Amen. It's the biggest burden that we have. Salvation for our loved ones. Praise God. Yes, yes. Let's also remember J.D. Um, Yes. And, and Jesse. Amen. Um, any updates or where we going with that? Same off. Okay. Let's remember them, guys. Jesse is someone that um, when we first met him about six weeks ago. Amen. We were told six weeks ago that he had six weeks to live. Amen. Amen. Well, that, that time's coming about, and we all prayed and fasted for this situation, and we don't know what the situation is going to be. But we have faith. Amen. Amen. When we look into our history, we see that God raised people from the dead, right? Amen. So we know that even if the ultimate happens, we know that what God's able to do. Amen. Amen. We were, we're just praying in advance that God would just touch him and, and just be with him and guide him and give him that comfort and peace. Amen. Praise God. God's able to do whatever he wants to do. Amen. Praise God. Anyone else? Go ahead, sis. Let's pray for our, uh, this world. Amen. For Mary Beth, um, Stephen, Paulina, and and Jenny, Amen. Remember, and and Athena. I'm sorry, I'm not writing this down. A lot of requests. Go ahead, brother. Uh, for Sabrina and Roger. Amen. Amen. Sabrina and Roger. Amen. They're on the list. Praise God. Praise God. Anyone else want to throw a prayer in? Here? Amen. Praise God. Lots of requests. A lot of requests. You probably won't remember them all. Amen. God knows our hearts. Amen. And God knows before you even utter the prayer today, I believe the wills already start working. If you have faith, amen, the wills already start working. Amen. Let's take it to the Lord. Lord, we're going to give this to you today, God, because you're able to do all things, God. Lord, you hear the needs in this place, God. Some of these needs, Lord, are impossible in our minds. Lord, but we know, God, that we serve a God that there is no restriction on you, God. There's no limitations, God, to what you can do. Lord, I pray, God, right now, God, Lord, for all those that need salvation, all our loved ones, God, that are lost right now, God, Lord, that they need your mercy. Lord, I pray, God, that you will continue to work in their lives, God. Help the Lord to, Lord, to understand, Lord, what's more important in this life, Lord, and that's you, and that's where we end up when this life is over. Lord, there's going to be a day, Lord, that we have to all answer to, to you, God, for our actions, God. Lord, I pray today, Lord, Lord, that we all understand the seriousness, Lord, of salvation. Lord, I pray, God, for Stephen and Mary Beth, Lord, all those that are sick, Paulina, Lord, and Athena, God, all those, God, Lord, that are hurting this morning, God, all those today, God, that these bodies are wearing on them. Lord, I pray, God, to the chief physician, someone, Lord, that created us, God, someone, Lord, that knows, God, Lord, what these bodies are all about. Lord, I pray, God, that you would touch them right where they are. Lord, allow them to feel your mercy, God. Allow them, Lord, to put your hand, God. Lord, turn in the wheels of their lives, God. Oh, Lord, I pray for this world as a whole. Lord, you see the destruction that's going on. You see the wars and the rumors of wars that are going on all around us, God. Lord, but I'm praying, God, for your protection, us. Lord, I'm praying, God, that you will give people peace, God. Lord, I pray that you will open their eyes, God. Lord, as we're entering out into these last times, Lord, help people to know, God. Lord, that you will be done, that they need to get their life right, that they need to get their lives better with you, God, that they need to get their relationship with you right, God. Lord, help them, Lord. Help them, Lord. I pray, God, for Lord, all those, God, that are struggling, God, with their salvation this morning. Lord, speak to them in a way, God, that open up their understanding, God. Oh, Lord, we're giving these things to you, God, because you're the only one that's able to do something about it. Lord, help us right now, God. Bless Christy, Christy today, Lord. Lord, you know the need, God. You know, Lord, the battles, God, within our life, God. Lord, help her, God. Lord, to realize, Lord, that you're needed, God, in her life, God. Lord, bless you, Lord. Bless every family, Lord, that is broken this morning. All those that need you, God. I give you the praise and the honor, God, for all that you do. In the blessed name of Jesus, glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. He's worthy. He is worthy. Praise God. 
I said he is worthy. Amen. Amen. I remember I used to talk to people that were um, on the verge of just giving up on life. And I remember the, the light bulb that came on in their minds when I started to talk to them about hope in Jesus and the love of God. Some people need to hear that. Some people need to hear that. Amen. They're not, they don't have to go through this life all alone. They need to hear about what, that there is a God. Amen. Just like that song we just sung. There is a God that loves us and wants to wrap you in his arms. Amen. But if they don't know that, never hear that. Amen. They're going to go on through life in despair and in depression. Amen. We need to be a hope to someone today. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Glory. Amen. We're going to switch over to uh, tithing and offering this morning. Amen. Amen. God's been faithful in our lives. Amen. And a lot of times in our in me and Marissa's life that sometimes we just don't know what's going to happen with different circumstances, the bills and and and, and such. But one thing that I, I I must say is that God has never failed me. He's always been there for us financially. Amen. And I contribute that to us being faithful tithe payers. Amen. That's what I contribute that to. Amen. Because when you give to God, amen, it's like he owes you. Amen. Not literally, he doesn't owe us a thing, but amen. When you give to God, he says that he will. Amen. He, he promises. Amen. That of, of the blessings that he's going to, that he'll give to us. Amen. And he doesn't just penny pinch when he gives back to us. Amen. He's a God that he's, he has an abundance. Amen. He owns a cattle on a thousand hills. That should say it. That should say it up. Amen. This world is his. Everything thereof is his. Amen. When you are a child of God and you need something. Amen. My God is there for us. Amen. He's there for us. Amen. So today we want to give you that opportunity to pay your tithe and offering. And if you're a donor online, we, um, we want to continue. To, you can continue to do that. GreatCommissionBC.org is the um, is the website you go to. Just go there and uh, push the donate tab and do what you felt led from God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Lord. Touch each and every individual in this room today, God. All those that are online watching, Lord. All those that, is, that are going to give online. Lord, we know, God, that the blessings that you give, God, Lord, can only come from you. Lord, we're going to expect, Lord, and Lord, we're put our desires and our hopes in you this morning, God. All those that are giving today, Lord, bless their homes, bless their finances, God. Bless, Lord, whatever their hands set out to do, God. Lord, we know, God, that you're a God that has everything under control. And Lord, we just need to, Lord, just to uh, to believe in that. We need, to, Lord, to give you, God, Lord, all our struggles and all of our fears and all of the things that are holding us back this morning. We just need to lay it at your feet, God, as you continue to do what you do best and as to bless your people and to lead us, God. Thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing for this church, for our homes, Lord, for this community, God. Continue to do what you do in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Come give them to the Lord. Shake hands and be friendly with you. Let your neighbors know you're glad they're here today. Amen. Let's talk to our visitor today. Amen. Let them know that we thank you for being here. Today.
Praise the Lord. Yes. Just to reiterate, 
today, of course, we're missing someone in her seat today. Sister Alice, she would be here, but last Sunday, her and God made a pact. And she, she said bye. So praise God. We're going to be at that service. And we want as many as can get there to support uh, the Estrada family. They have a big family. And uh, uh, we're, we're just, uh, we just would appreciate everybody coming out just to show support to the Estradas here as, as uh, we all say goodbye to Mother Alice. I want Brother Randy to talk about the gift cards. And yes. And, oh, yeah, Brother Randy, uh, one other quick announcement about the, uh, I guess, the friends and family. Okay. No, uh, Easter. 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 Okay. God bless y'all. Looking forward to Easter Sunday. Uh, we're going to uh, have an Easter drive, a uh, visitor drive for Easter, and we're going to want to bring out their, their friends and their family and uh, everyone else. And part of next Sunday is uh, the picnic, and that's to try to help us, encourage us to get our families and friends together. So we're hoping that a lot of those, those people that come next week will also come get Easter. Uh, but for Easter Sunday, we're going to uh, have a contest where we're going to have a gift cards for the adult that brings the most visitors. We're having a $50 gift card. And for the young person that brings the most visitors, we're having a $20 gift card. So we want y'all to come out, uh, bring your friends, bring your family, bring your visitors, and uh, have a great time. Amen. Wish me God. Yes, yes. Praise God. Excited about what's going on and what we have planned here. God is good. Hallelujah. Praise God. How many have had a good week this week? Right. Amen. Yes. Praise God. There's a lot of things going on in our world. Sister Francis had that prayer request about the finances of the world. But really, a lot of things are set topsy-turvy because of the war that's going on. Unnecessary war. And uh, just... Uh, pretty shameful thing that's taking place. A lot of people are dying. And uh, so in your prayers, I hope you're remembering, we need to do that, remember the Ukraine because it's, uh, it's a bad situation over there. Uh, we have churches, missionaries, and, uh, and just some regular churches there. And um, I know that some people were connected. I just haven't followed up on how the people are doing. But, you know, so far about three, almost four million people have left the country just trying to escape the war. And uh, the parts that they thought were safe uh, just got bombed the other night. So we just we just need to pray for our brothers and sisters there and, and the people that are dealing with a calamitous situation that they really can't help themselves. So praise God. Keep that in your prayers. And uh, we're excited about what God's doing. So for Sunday school, if we have any children that are going to be Want to send us with that be off to my left, your right. Praise God. If you'll stand this morning, I want to bring something that God's put on my heart to you today. I believe it's going to bless us. It's going to help us uh, to understand some things about God. It's always good to get a better understanding of the God that we serve. The God that loves us. The God that's concerned about us. The God that cares about us. Yeah. Praise Amen. God. And uh, sometimes... It's good to understand his perspective. Praise God. It, it, it helps us to see life uh, the way it really is. Hallelujah. Sometimes we, we experience things and we look for the prism that we're used to seeing things. And sometimes that can get us discouraged. Sometimes that can make us want to quit. Sometimes that can make us want to give up. But when we begin to look through God's eyes and understand things through his understanding, it helps us to get a better perspective on life. Helps our faith in Him. Yes, helps yes. our trust in Him yes. to grow. Praise God. So if you'll turn your Bibles to Genesis chapter number 37, familiar text of Scripture that I want to take our reading from this morning. A few verses here. Genesis chapter number 37. And I'm going to start reading at verse number 5. And then if you'll get Psalms chapter number 84. Just one verse out of there. But Genesis 37 verse 5 says, And Joseph dreamed the dream, and he told it his brethren. 
and they hated him yet the more. And he said unto them, Here I pray you this dream, which I have dreamed. For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheaf arose, and also stood upright. And behold, your sheaves stood round about and made obeisance to my sheep, or bowed down to my sheep. And his brothers, who were older than him, said unto him, Shall thou indeed reign over us? Or shall thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him, yet the more for his dreams and for his words. Verse number 9. And he dreamed yet another dream, and told it his brethren, and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. And behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obeisance to me. Verse number 10. And he told it to his father and to his brethren, and his father rebuked him. And said unto him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to the earth? And this, and his brethren rather, envied him, but his father observed the same. Now if you'll turn in your Bibles over to Psalms chapter number 84. In verse number 11. It says the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. Praise God. Let's put our Bibles down. And let's talk to the Lord for a moment. Father, we love you this morning. We're so thankful, Lord God, for your word, God, that contains, Lord, your heart. That contains the way that you think, Lord. That contains the wisdom, Lord. Hallelujah. That you've made this world with and that you operate, Lord, by. I pray that you would touch us this morning, God. Speak to our hearts. Speak to our minds. Speak to our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise God. You can be seated. I want to preach to you this morning from this thought, the other part of the promise. The other part of the promise. You know, boiler rooms are not pretty places. If anybody's worked in a building, you've been on a ship, a boiler place isn't a pretty place, but they are mandatory, necessary requirements in order to experience the convenience, comfort, and quality of life that we've come to expect in our modern world. It's that room that is the mechanical room. There's nothing glamorous about that, but it's necessary. It serves a vital function on a ship that propels it forward. It's where the hard work is done that's necessary for the ship to properly function and get to its destination. Without a boiler room, you have no power to make it possible. All the highly visible uh, reality that we desire, all the things that are comforting and uh, keeps everything comfortable for us. No source of energy required to take on the time-tested sea can do it without this place of no glamour that's basically for production. You know, in the old days when they had ships and steamships and maybe even people down in that, that lower part of the ship rowing the ship. Sweat labor. No air conditionings. And it's just a horrible situation down there. But somebody had to do it in order for that ship to get to where it was going. You know what God promises, dreams, visions... And things like that that come from God require a boiler room too. Where the difficult, many times unknown struggles that produce what God brings to fruition. Yes, amen. There's another side. There's another part of the promise. There's the part that God doesn't actually speak about to us. About the promise. Because... Everything that God that God shows us 
is what's going to benefit us. That's going to help propel us. That's going to help get us to that place. But there's other parts of it. The backstory that's not told. Because it would severely limit our ability to trust God. It may even make us want to quit. It may make us do a lot of things that, that aren't beneficial as we go forward. In his wisdom, he withholds information about the future that could prove detrimental to our faith. God withholds some things. He doesn't give all the information out. He's selective as to what he tells us or what he reveals. He's selective as to what he shows us. You know, I often thought, especially as a kid, when I heard the story of the hand, there's a party going on, and people are drinking, and they are drinking out of, of goblets that they should not actually be using. For the, the uh, Nebuchadnezzar's army had taken the Israelites captive. They went into the house of God and they'd taken all of the, the, uh, the ornaments of gold, all those vessels, and they had them stored. And Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, would never do this. He had a certain respect for God because of some things that had happened that God had showed him, you know, that God was God. One of those things being, he took praise and took the praise that people were giving him. And God talked to him. God says, God warned him. He says, if you don't humble yourself, I'm going to take all of this from you. And the way that God did that is God allowed him to grow claws like an animal. Hair in his body just grew like an animal, like a wild animal. In his mind, he lost his mind for a while. And the Bible says that he was so bad that they drove him out from among people. This didn't happen for one or two days or a weekend, but for seven long years. The king of the earth. And I don't know how they kept face or didn't let anybody know what was going on, but somehow his palace kept things in order. No, no invading countries invaded, but he was out eating grass like an animal with claws, hair growing all over the place. But after that, he lifted up his eyes and was humble before God. So, so he would never do this. But his grandson, Belteshazzar, was having a party. That's how it is. You know, sometimes the next generation doesn't quite understand how things got to where they were. And they don't have an appreciation for anything. It's not his son that does this, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it's his grandson that does this. And uh, no respect, no understanding of, of that. And maybe the story was told to him, but it's so far, so distant, that it doesn't really impact him. And so he goes and gets the goblets and all the things... And they begin to drink out of the vessels that are dedicated to the Lord because they've taken the Israelites captive and they got them under their thumb. And so therefore, their God can't be all that powerful in his mind or whatever allowed him to break that prohibition that night. So he gets it and he's drinking and they're having a good time and they're doing what they normally do. Except they've gone a little further to this night. And the Bible says that a hand appeared out of nowhere and began to write on the wall. All they saw is the hand. They didn't see the rest of a body that was connected to the hand. They just saw the hand writing on the wall. And the writing on the wall, of course, it froze everybody because it was something that never happened. And the writing on the wall was saying, basically, you have been weighed in the balance. In other words, you're judged right now. And you have been found wanting. In other words, that scale that you waited on, you come short. This night, your kingdom is being torn from you. And what was going on that night? The Medes and the Persians. Where that night, underneath, tunneling underneath the ground, where they had 
you know, the, the water supply coming in. They tunneled in. They stopped the water up. And they tunneled in. The army came in and overtook Babylon that night. He lost everything. You know, I've often thought about that story, and I just think about the rest of the body connected to it. That's not seen. All you see is a hand writing. And you know, when God gives promises, all you see is just that promise. Whatever it does to you, if it makes you dream, it makes you hope, it pushes you forward, all you see is just the promise. But you don't see any other part of it. But how many know there's another part of the promise? Right. Yes. 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 There's Amen. always another part of the promise. There's always more than what you're seeing. There's always yes. more to it. There's always a bad side to it. There's always a struggle to it. There's always that foundation that has to be laid. You know, you can sometimes just see the high rise. You know, the promise is just a high rise. It's all together looking nice elevated and all that stuff. But in order to get to the place that you have a high rise, you had to dig down into the earth. Foundation had to be poured. The part that doesn't look pretty at all. Land had to be cleared out. All the stuff that's not fun. But this is how it is with the promises of God. This is how it is when God says something. When God speaks into our lives. You know, sometimes God doesn't speak. We, there's a lot of things that we just face. But sometimes God speaks. Sometimes God shows things to us. Sometimes God reveals some things about that future that the Bible says that we look through a glass darkly. Mm -hmm. In other words, we look into a dark glass when we look at the future. We don't know the future. God isn't giving us that ability. God's given us a lot of abilities. But one of the things that God has made dark to us on purpose is the future. Your faith, my faith, depends on it being dark. Praise God. Sometimes God will pierce through that darkness with a glimpse of what will be. Yes. That's right. His word is full of hints about what will be. And it's devoid of many other things that that show what will be. Many times God does not talk about all the hardships. Because if he revealed the hardships to you. Even though he tells you. You're going to win in the end. You won't even go forward. That's true. We would stop. We would not give God the time of day. We would not allow our faith to walk through that process. In the life of Joseph. The Bible says that he dreamed these dreams. But his father first showed favoritism. And his brothers hated him. But then God showed him a glimpse of his future. And it's just the good parts. God painted a really nice picture of his future. Didn't understand it. But he gave him something really nice. It caused him trouble in the short term. But it was really nice about Joseph. It was a pretty... Neat position to be in when everybody's bound down. He didn't ask for it, but God showed him that. That's right. And you got to know this, that in order for there to be a blessing, there's got to be a pressing. Come on. That's right. Come on. There's got to be, right. if God's going to be the one that's in charge of blessing your life, there's going to be something yes. that you go through. Yes, yes. That's torturous. That's, that's, if God shows you, if God talks to you about something He's going to do, you better believe there's going to be something that you're going to go through that's going to be difficult. Because God's not into spoiling His children. You think about all the stars and people that have all this money and you know just too much money to know what to do with it. And how their kids turn out. You know, I can name some names, but no won't. Their kids turn out terrible because they're given everything in life. They're spoiled. God's not going to have spoiled children. You can't get to where God's taking you on the back of your mother and your father's relationship with God. You have to have a first generation relationship with God. You'll go through some first generation stuff. Praise God. You look at, 
that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, we, we hear those names called, if you were a Jew, you'd hear that very often, that those are the patriarchs. But each of them could not rest on the laurels of the one before them. Jacob had to have his own stuff. Abraham had his own stuff that God did with him to show him, to give him faith. Isaac had to have his own stuff. And so God will take us each through things to build our faith, to build our trust, to build us up as people, as a child of God. Because otherwise, we would be spoiled. God just handed everything to us. You'd never appreciate it as being from God. Yes. But God has a plan and He needs man to cooperate yes. with Him. He needs people to cooperate with His plan in order for His plan to come to fruition. And so God being so wise mm -hmm. in His understanding knows just how much to give to man. Think about this. You know, it's a mystery. Praise God. It's a wonder and a mystery before you realize that God has all wisdom and He's brilliant. Amen. And His brilliance far exceeds ours. Yes. That God would ever venture to speak to man anything about the future. Think about it. He's, a, he's left His Word that speaks clearly, that communicates clearly His Word, but still at the same time, people have so confused it, misconstrued it, misinterpreted it. You know, it took 40 different authors over a span of 1,500 years to write the Word of God. But yet and still, people have misappropriated this and misunderstood that. And so, it, you know, it would make us wonder, why would God ever say something about the future to somebody? Because man so messes things up. Yeah, right, right, right. But God in His wisdom knows how much to give you Think about all the events that take place in a span of time to get to something. Such as in Joseph's life. God left out all these details. Except for what happens at the very end. God knew that Joseph was going to go through something. Some really ugly things. Some things that were out of his control. And God knows that you and I go through things that are out of our control. Yes. And you know what? God doesn't right. tell you sometimes ahead of time. Now, there are times that God actually talks about the bad stuff. Think about Paul. In Paul's life, when Paul is first becoming saved, when he, when he meets Ananias and, and he goes uh, and, and he's, uh, he's blinded, he's at the house in Straight Street and Ananias comes. And the Bible says that Ananias lays hands on him and he receives his sight. And then Ananias talks to him and says that God is going to use you to speak to great people. But God doesn't tell him anything else. He says, you're just going to be used by God to speak to great people. And so if you were Paul, maybe you were thinking, wow, I'm going to get more opportunity, big crowds of folks, and I'm going to be introduced to this dignitary, that person. What God left out is that this is going to happen while you're in chains. While you're appealing to speak to crazy Caesar, Nero. So if you go before crazy Nero, where they are thinking about how to pin all the problems of Rome on the Christians at the time that that's happening, well, you're not going to get a favorable judgment. But God never said anything about any of that stuff. But what you find is as Paul is working his way up in the days before, maybe the years before, a couple, maybe a year or so before, I don't know exactly when this is, but Paul writes, I have fought a good fight. Yes. Mm -hmm. I have finished my... In other words, he knew what was going to happen. Amen. God allowed the light to shine on what was going to take place at the right time. That's right. Good stuff. Amen. I don't know what Paul would have done with it. I don't know what any of us would do with it certain information that we know. But God holds some things close to the best for your sake. Amen. Good. Amen. No good thing will He withhold. If God is withholding information, it's not because He's against you. Mm -hmm. But He's for you. Amen. Yes. Yes. He understands yes. you. Yes. He understands me. He understands how we think. Right. And sometimes knowing certain things right now 
to mess up everything in my life. That's right. That's right. right. That's why I've got to trust Him. That's right. Amen. Praise God. Holy. And I have to understand that what I'm going towards, whatever God is... So, you know, sometimes God puts something in your heart. God talks to us in different ways. Sometimes God talks to us through a prophecy. Somebody on the outside speaks a word. Other times it could be tongues interpretation, and it's, and it's, once again, kind of a prophetic thing. Sometimes it's a simple word that somebody in conversation with us gives us a word. Right. Almost like advice, word of wisdom. Boom. Or they enlighten us in some way, word of knowledge, and we gain some information. Or sometimes God can speak personally and individually right. through a dream. Yes. And God will, he, he knows how to be most effective to you. Yes. He knows exactly what to say and how to say it and when to say it. Because when it's that personal as a dream, when God paints on the canvas of your mind while you're in La La Land, it's something that feels so real. How many times you woke up from a dream and said, "Wow, that felt so real." Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because your your mind and your body was totally engaged in that dream. And sometimes this is the way that God communicates and God speaks to us about what He's going to do. Abraham was told that he was going to have a son. He was promised he was going to have a son. Mm -hmm. But what God didn't really specify to Abraham is how that son was going to come. You see, God gives us sometimes impart, you know, partial information. He doesn't give us all the details. And so Abraham and Sarah look at this and they act in their flesh right away. Sarah's like, okay, I can't, it can't be through me. She disqualifies herself right away. So let me help you out. And she brings in, you know, her her maid. And the trouble and the problems that caused. That's not what God said. And, and sometimes, you know, when God has spoke to us and He's not given us all the details, hasn't made it clear. There is a certain time that you just simply wait on. The Lord. That's it. Amen. Right. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. There's a promise along with that. Isaiah 40 and 28 says, They that wait upon Amen. the Lord shall renew Amen. their strength. Right. Right. Amen. Why? Because waiting is tiring. Yeah. Waiting makes you lose hope. When you feel that nothing's happening, and the devil's not standing by when God makes promises, he's always trying to come with the opposite. God says this is going to happen. Satan says, but look what's happening. Nothing. Nothing's happening. Or all the things that are opposite to what God said, that's what's going on right now. And what God says, that's just in your mind. You just had bad pizza that night. or It's not really God speaking to you. That person missed it. Satan will talk to you. Satan will speak to you when the opposite of what God says is happening in your life. Yes. And you got to know that this is the way it works. He's always going to be the voice, the loud voice shining doubt on what God has said. He's always going to pour doubt on what God says. Because if he can make you think that what God says isn't true, mm -hmm. he, can be, he can begin to make you depressed about what you're looking at. Right. He can allow despair to come in. When God got ready to give Sarah or give Abraham the promised child, he comes to Abraham and he says, you're going to have a son. Abraham's not even thinking that. He's thinking it already happened. The way I know that is because he says, all that Ishmael may live before the Lord. And God says, no, nah, Sarah, your wife, is going to conceive about this time next year. When it's the right time. See, sometimes if, if God told them exactly what was going to happen, I don't know what would have happened. God had a certain time that that had to occur. Because God also told Abraham before that that your lineage 
is going to be 400 years in bondage. He talked about, he spoke about, he gave this word about what was going to happen in the future. 400 years in bondage. And it's because of the cups of the different nations that were in that land, weren't, their iniquity wasn't fulfilled. In other words, God was still having mercy. And so he allows Abraham all this information. Abraham had this close relationship with God, and God revealed a lot of things to him. And that's how it is. As we get closer and closer to God, God can trust us with more information. God can give us more information because that information won't harm us. Because the trust in God is so strong. Abraham's trust in God was so strong that the Bible says that after he received the promised son that he didn't expect. He thought he already had Ishmael was the son. But after God did this miraculous thing, it so blew Abraham's mind that here's God saying, Abraham, now that he's, he's, a, he's a young man, I want you to take that child and sacrifice him on Mount Moriah. Abraham doesn't tell Sarah what's going on. Him and Isaac go. Because I, I think if he'd have told her, I don't know if that would have been an easy trip. But who knows? But he didn't tell her. So here they are to go on. And as Abraham's getting ready to go up the mountain, his, his, his people ask him, or Abraham rather turns to his servants and say, I and the lad are going up to yonder to worship, and we shall return. And what we're, what, we're learned, what we're learning in the New Testament about this whole scene is that Abraham believed that even if he plunged a knife through his son, that God could raise him up. That's a lot of faith. Because it's personal faith. It's personal you know, it's easy to believe that God can heal somebody way over there or that's not really connected to you, but when it's that closely connected to you, mm -hmm. that's where real faith is at. Yes. Yeah, amen. This is a son he's waited on. But Abraham was of the, of the, of the knowledge that, uh, or of the opinion that if God gave me this son when I couldn't have a son, through my wife that could not, impossible. Mm -hmm. Then God can raise that son up. His faith was that strong. Yes. Praise God. And that's why he was fully ready to plunge that knife through his son. Hallelujah. And God said, no. I see that you won't withhold even your son. That promise that you wanted from him. Jacob would never have had a life changing experience. He would never have wrestled. If God would have told him, if he would have known that it's going to be all right with his brother. Sometimes we wonder, why am I worrying? Why am I going through this stress? Why am I going through this? Because sometimes God is trying to elevate us. Amen. Good stuff. Yeah. He's trying to tie our yeah. relationship with him Glory. and make it stronger. Because if you knew the future, That's right. That's right. there's some things you wouldn't do. That's right. Mm -hmm. There's no way that Jacob, if he knew that his brother was not going to harm him with those 400 men that he knew was coming. If he knew he wasn't going to be harmed by that, that night he would have went to sleep. And he would have never had that name-changing experience. That's right. Yeah. Praise God. Sometimes God doesn't reveal things just so that he can pull us to a place, praise God, that we would never get with, 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 the, with the knowledge. If I knew everything was going to be all right, there's some prayers I wouldn't pray. There's some times I wouldn't spend talking to God. There's some things I wouldn't do because I already knew. But God withholds information. And then sometimes he gives it. But what he gives is selective. The other part of the promise, praise God, he doesn't give. The other part of the promise, he doesn't say. You look at Moses' life. God knew when he tasked Moses with the responsibility of leading his people to the promised land that Moses wasn't going. He knew that Moses' anger that camouflaged his doubt was a problem. But he never told Moses this. Because if he shared that with Moses, I don't 
don't know that Moses would have had the full motivation to go forward. Remember when he first came to Moses, right? When he, he, he got a real comfortable position and he was 40 years watching sheep. The Bible says he was the meekest man in the earth. The meekest man. And when God tried to pull him out of that situation, it was tough. God let him see a burning bush, something that was an anomaly to what's natural. And he went over to check it out, and God says, take off your shoes. Then God began to speak to him through that burning bush. And told him he's going to do miracles at his hands. You know, I want you to lead my people and all this stuff. And he started complaining about his voice, and his, he's not good at speaking, and all this other stuff. Many excuses, and God got mad at him. Said, Who made your voice? I mean, I, I prepared you for this. You were spared. You haven't worked as a slave. You grew up in a palace. All these things were done. You were prepared for this time, this position. God had, had done all this stuff. And so God had to, it was a hard thing to convince Moses. Now, how about if God would just share some things about Moses? Well, you know, this is going to happen, but you're not going to go in. There are certain things that God holds back. Yeah. Because in revealing those things, it would they could probably alter the way that you would think about it and what you would even do. Yeah, that's right. Amen. But God in His mercy, see Moses made it. Moses will be in heaven. He messed up at the end because God told him. He says, "I want you to speak to the rock this time. The first time you smote the rock, now I want you to speak to rock, and water's going to come out when they were thirsty." So Moses. Goes to the rock. The people were complaining. They hadn't drank in a few days. And, but God had always come through before. When they had need, they were hungry. People got, you know, a couple days hungry and they would start to fuss and complain. They are, never ever reminded themselves that God came through last time we were in this predicament. They never reminded themselves of that. But they just complained and bickered. And Moses was tired of hearing it. But the Bible reveals something that you probably would never get. God says, when he comes to Moses, he says, it's because you doubted. The people's complaining, hearing that, got a hold of Moses. And so, the Bible says that instead of speaking to the rock, he struck the rock. And we find out that that rock represented Jesus. But Moses struck that rock and because of that, him and his brother Aaron weren't allowed to go in to the promised land. But Moses still made it. You know, God God just told me, he said, I can't let you in because of what you've done. Praise God, Joshua's going to lead him on in. But God didn't tell him that at the beginning. God allowed him to, you know, to, to use what God had given him, things that God had used him to do to lead his people in. Sometimes God doesn't shed, shed the light that we want to see. Sometimes we want to know what's going to happen in the future. God, I want to see this. I want to know this. How is this going to work out? God doesn't always say that. Right. Right. Because it would be more harmful to us. Praise God. The Bible says in Psalms 84, 11, The Lord God is a sun. Shines the light. But then He's a shield. He blocks certain information. Yeah. Yeah. Says, the Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will He withhold from them that walk upright. The more you get to know God, the more He can trust you with negative things. Yes. As God is looking down and He's getting ready to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. He says, can I hide anything from my friend? And he reveals to Abraham what he's about to do. This causes Abraham to have a reaction. Abraham's reaction is mercy. This is what God is made of. God is made of mercy. Mercy is the greatest way you show love. And so Moses acts as God would act with that information. Moses says, if there's 50 righteous, will you spare them? God says, if there's 50 righteous, 
And he, he goes all the way down, barters with God down to ten. Because Moses is taking on the place of God. He's taking on the mercy of God. He's acting as God would think. And so God could share with him what he was about to do. The closer you get to God, the more God can reveal to you. The more God can trust you, the more he can reveal to you. Yes. You know that God always wants to speak? There's always a word. There's always something that God wants to say. Yes. Praise God. Yes. There's always something that God wants to share. There's always something that God wants to reveal. Praise God. I believe that. But God will reveal that to us. God will share things with us. And God will withhold things from us. Praise God because He loves us. Amen. There's another part of the promise. There's another part of that promise that you don't see. There's another part of that promise that you don't hear about. There's another part of that promise that, that's never revealed to you. You just walk into it. Joseph couldn't know about how his brothers were going to treat him. They, he couldn't know about how it was going to be in Potiphar's house and then be all snatched away from him. God withheld that. God just showed him the end picture. And in His love, and in His mercy, and in His grace to us, to increase our faith, sometimes all He gives us is the rosy picture. What's going to be? He speaks a word. He shows us something. But he doesn't tell us what he's going to take us through to get there. There's a foundation. There's something that has to be built. There's a boiler room. Right. Yeah. Praise God. That's necessary in order for what you are seeing to come to pass. There is a boiler room. I'm telling somebody this morning, yeah. there's a boiler yeah. room. And you might be in that right now. Hallelujah. You may be in that situation. Hallelujah. You're looking at the ugly parts of Jesus. it. And wondering, God, you said this. But all I see is that. There's a foundation that's being dug out. But you're not always going to be just playing in the mud. You might feel like you're stuck in the mud this morning. But that, that muddy place is part of the foundation yes. being dug out. Yes. It's part of that, that necessary part in order for what you're seeing, that high rise, that finished product, that necessary part must happen. Right. Praise God. Yes. Amen. Amen. God doesn't give us all the gory details because we can't handle them. That's right. But when we face them, those details are not to make us think, well, God missed it. Because every time that God made a promise, you look at in the life of Joseph, in, the, in that promise, what was never said, but certainly experienced is what it was going to take for him to operate when God finally took him to the palace. You see, his dad had given him skills and everything, but those skills were never used. It took him being a slave in Potiphar's house for him to use all of those skills. And then to have it completely snatched away so that he could meet a man in the prison that would recommend him to the king. God doesn't go the route that, you know, that we're familiar with. That's right. God rarely comes down a street that we're familiar with to fulfill His promises or to do things in our lives or to even answer prayers that we're praying diligently. He has His own way. And sometimes He uses things that are seemingly totally unconnected to bring it to pass. But that's where our trust is developed in God. That's where God develops us. That's where God makes us into what He's wanting us to be. Praise God. When we face those things that we cannot understand, we don't see it. All we see is the promise. And now it looks like the promise is being taken away. It looks like God's not working. But that's the opposite. God is actually working when it seems like He's not. When Joseph is there in the prison, praise God, after he's answered those questions, after he's, he's interpreted those dreams, you know, he could have totally given up. He tells those two men, he tells them that God has given me the ability to interpret dreams. We don't even know that in the story until that point. But Joseph, having had his dreams dashed, his hopes crashed, 
in prison, accused of something that could have cost him his life, alone. But he's still interpreting dreams. And it's those dreams that he interprets. That's the, that's the vehicle that God is going to use to bring to pass yeah. what God is showing him yeah. Yeah. in a dream. Yeah. Praise God. God uses that very thing. And if he would have gotten despondent in prisons of uh, <laughs> dreams, what are they? Right. I had a dream once. It was going pretty good. But look where I'm at. God gave Joseph dreams because he knew that this was going to fortify him. Even when he went through some really rough stuff. When God speaks to you, you can let it go. You don't have to hold on to it. You can just let it go. And you know some people do that. Some people fall short, stop short. Some people never realize what God was saying or what to do in their life. I believe that. I think some people, they stop short of what God showed them as possible. And they allow all of the things that life is showing them. The devil's not sitting back by himself and not doing anything. He's bringing things to you too because he wants to discourage you. And when you recognize these factors, it helps you to grab a hold of, of God and what he said. Maybe it's about a family member. And it's, it looks like that person's just strung out and they'll never ever get themselves right. But God's told you something about that family member. It doesn't seem probable. doesn't seem possible. doesn't seem like it could ever come to pass. It seems like the opposite's happening. They're getting worse. But I believe God. Right, right, right. I believe God. If God has spoken to you, you have to believe that. Right. You know, David, you know, the, the reason I believe that he got through some of the roughest stuff, God didn't tell him, you know, he comes to be anointed to be king. Here comes Samuel. He's in the field, they come and get him. None of his brothers were, were the one that was to be anointed. He comes, and immediately Samuel says, This is the one. God says to him, This is the one. He anoints him king, pours the oil over his head. Now he's oiled. It runs down his clothes and all that stuff. But God has talked to him. Then the lion, you know, you know, the lion and the bear situation, maybe that happened before. But now Goliath, he kills Goliath, boy, it's just really going good. But what he was never told about is that the king is going to hate you. And the king is going to chase you like a dog to kill you. He's going to try to take your life. He was never told that. Never shared with him. None of that stuff that ever came. Just that you're going to be king. And everything in his life was kind of showing. Wow, you're going to be king. You're the hero of Israel. You're going out there winning many battles. But the king hates you. He's jealous of you. Never knew that was going to be a part of the equation. But these are the things that were going to make David. Think he could have been, he could have been a spoiled child, right? God blessed him with all this stuff. He goes out and wins against Goliath. And from there, he just sails on to become the king and probably the worst king Israel ever had. Because Saul came, the tallest man, the most handsome man, the most qualified man to be king. And he turned out to be an utter disaster. Mm -hmm. But David came to the kingdom, some success, but then such persecution from the top guy. The king hated him. Mm -hmm. But it was that relationship with God you know, he's by himself watching his father's sheep, protecting them. That built his relationship up to a certain degree. But now, when he was called to be king, it needed to be tested. Yes. And the way that it was tested was the, with the most powerful man in the kingdom coming at him, hating him, bringing the entire army to kill him. Right. And this is another part of his relationship. All these psalms that David wrote, a lot of those things were when he was in tight situations. He was in situations that made him probably doubt in his mind. Am I really going to be king? 
but it was necessary to form who God was making. That's it, right. There was a promise, but there was another part of that promise. Amen. And today I'm telling somebody, you may have a promise on your life, you may have something you're standing on. Praise God. But there's another part of it. And I'm going to tell you that God's not lying. God's not abandoned you. God's not rejected you. God's not changed his mind. There's just another part yes, yes. of the promise. Yes. Amen. Praise God. Let's stand this morning. There's another part of the promise. It's not, it's not the glamorous side. The glamorous side is the part that God tells us and gets us excited and helps us to believe. But the part that's not so glamorous is when it doesn't look like it's going to happen. It hurts. It's painful. And all kind of, all the negative sides of it. Because there's two shoes. Sometimes we're just seeing that first foot that's put forward. That's giving us a promise, making us think things are going to be rosy. But then that other shoe has to drop. And that's the reality of things. There's two sides to it. But I'm not going to get discouraged in the darkness. I'm going to believe what God has shown me in the light. Yes, yes. Praise God. Even when the darkness falls. Before each blessing that God's in charge of, there comes a pressing. You have to be tried in the fire and come forth as pure gold. It takes that. It takes that. God's not into spoiled children. He knows the events in your life that you need. He knew that David needed Saul to become King David. A man, not perfect, but after God's own heart. Yes. How many want that kind of reputation in heaven? Yes. Amen. A man after God's own heart. Somebody that could could make mistakes, big ones, and yet not quit. And not yet give up. But come to God and say, God, I'm wrong. I've sinned before you. And repent. And get up and walk right. God speaks to every life. God speaks to each of us in our own way. I believe that. He wants to speak, praise God, through the church. And I, I believe that through the gifts of the Spirit, God speaks. But God speaks to you individually. And we are the gatekeeper to decide if we're going to reject it or if we're going to believe it. I choose to believe God. I choose to believe what God is saying. I choose to act in faith. I choose to step out in faith. I choose to believe that God is more able to do whatever he said he's going to do. I'm grabbing a hold of it this morning. I'm grabbing, grabbing a hold of it this morning. I'm believing God. I'm standing on his promises. I'm believing God. Yes, there's two sides to life. There's a night and there's a day. There's happiness. And there's sometimes sadness. But I believe God. Because with the passing of every day, every night, every day, every night, every day, I'm just getting closer to what God has promised. I'm getting closer to what God has said. He's not a man. He cannot lie. He's not a man. He cannot lie. What God has promised, He will bring to pass. And while He's doing it, He's working on this guy. Why does it have to be? Because God is working on me. He doesn't just Pave a pave a, a pavement of gold and say, walk towards your promise. Thank you, Lord. It doesn't happen that way. There's obstacles that are necessary for your faith to leap over and continue down the path to where God has said you're going to be. Praise God. We go from faith to faith. Praise God. 
There's victory in your life, praise God, that God wants to give through the trials that you face, through the storms that you face. Those are necessary to bring us to the place that God has designed for us to be, praise God. Hallelujah. The promises that God makes are yea and amen. He cannot lie. Praise God. These altars are open. Hallelujah. Let's talk to God this morning. God is speaking in our lives. God is talking to those things that you're talking to Him about. He talks back to you. Praise God. He speaks back to you. Praise God. He's talking to your heart right now. Praise God. He's reminding you of some things right now. And praise God. When you're praying to God, when you're believing God, God will bring those things to pass. He will speak to our hearts. He'll let us know. But we have to grab a hold of it. We have to push through the obstacles. We have to push through the doubt that the enemy brings in our minds. And we have to say if God did it for somebody else, He's the same God that has made that same thing available to me. Praise God. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy, God. Praise God. My brother stands here today as an answer to prayer. He was gone about 20 years from God. And it didn't seem even possible to me in my mind almost at times. I prayed about it, and sometimes I stopped praying. I'd forgotten. But I was invited back in 2009 or 10 to my pastor's 35th anniversary. I was going to be one of the speakers. And I got there that night, and as I got there, there was... A lot of family members and friends that I hadn't seen in many, many years. And I saw my brother there. And I said, well, everybody was here. I didn't really think too much of it. And went to my seat. Service went on. And prayer was given. And sermon was, was over. Now the altar call was given. And I saw him. I, I was on the other side of the sanctuary. And I, I saw him. And when I saw him, I said, it just, it, it just, all the prayers and all the impossibility and implausibility of it all it just it just came over me at one moment I couldn't even walk over there I was so overcome I didn't even get to pray with him I was just so overcome as he prayed back through and I, and I watched it from a distance because I was just so overcome with God you are incredible I never expected this I want you to close your eyes right now. There can be many things that you're thinking about, many different promises, and maybe it's, it's, it could be financial, maybe it could be somebody in your family. Or, but right now, I just want us to kind of focus in on a soul. Somebody that seems impossible. The most impossible person to reach. The most impossible person in your mind, in your family perhaps. Or a friend or someone you know that you care about that seems like they're a million miles away. And I want us to pray about that person right now. Father, I love you. I thank you, God, for your goodness, for your mercy. I thank you, Lord God, for your promises. I thank you, Lord God, for your ability to reach. God, I don't want to give up on somebody, Lord. And keep them from ever coming to you. God, I pray right now that you would move in that life. Lord, as impossible as it may seem. As hard as they seem that they are. As far as they seem that they are away from you, God. I pray that you would reach their life right now. That you would touch them right now, God. I want to see that person come to you, God. I want to see them come to you. It seems impossible. The enemy of my soul will tell me that they're not coming. It's not going to work. But Lord, I'm pushing past all that. I believe in you, God, because you're able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask for. Thing. You can move in that life right now, God. You can bring them, Lord God, to that place, God, that they need to be. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, have your way this morning. Have your way this morning, God. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, have your way this morning, God. Show up, Lord God. Show your might. Show your power, God. 
Lord God, as we invite family members, Lord, for next week, I pray, Lord God, that you would work on hearts, Lord. We pray for your anointing here, Lord, next week, God. We pray that you would touch, Lord God, and have your way, God. In the name of Jesus, that you would move by your spirit, by your power, God. Hallelujah. Have your way, God. Have your way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, we love you today, God. We thank you, God, in advance, Lord God. Hallelujah. We thank you in advance, God. Lord, for the Praise God. Lord, for the soul on us, God. Hallelujah. Oh, we don't deserve it, God. It's your presence, Lord, that we need. Lord, Praise God. God. Hallelujah. Lord, lead you got to know this. Sometimes when you start praying about it, it seems like it goes haywire. Thank you, Lord. Seems like it goes the opposite way, but don't let that deter you. Don't let that deter you. Just understand that this has to be. This is the other side of the promise. I believe that God will save them. I believe that God, God's arms are reaching out. But at the same time, yeah, there's a there's a human side of this. They may push away. But God's not the quitting kind. He keeps reaching. Yes, yes. I preached a message several years ago. God's not finished until we are. As right. long as you're willing to believe. Right, right. Praise God. Yes. Glory. Lord, we love you this morning. I thank you for your goodness and mercy. Thank you, Lord, for your people, Lord God. Thank you for your promises, Lord. Thank you for somebody, God, who's living with a promise. Thank you for somebody, Lord God, who's nursing a promise. That seems like it's broken. God, I, I pray, Lord God, for somebody that's heard your voice, God, and they're doubting it right now. Lord, I pray, God, that they'll pick up that mantle again, Lord, and believe, Lord God, that if you said it, God, you can do it. And if you've done it for anybody else, you can do it again. I pray, God, for somebody's testimony, God, to be increased, Lord. Somebody that's gone through the night, God. Somebody that's going through the storm. Somebody that's there right now, God. Wondering if it's ever going to change. Lord, I pray, God, that you would help them to know that this is just the other part of the promise. You're not a man that you should lie. What you say, you will bring to pass. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, I worship you, Jesus. You will bring it to pass, God. Hallelujah. You will bring it. You will do it. You will do it. Hallelujah. I worship you. I honor you, Lord. Hallelujah. God, I magnify you, Jesus. You will bring it to pass, God. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for your Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, you never stopped. Oh, you never stopped. You never failed us, Lord. You're always leading us, God. Keep a light to our feet, Lord. Lord, no matter where we are, no matter where we're going, Lord. Have your way, Jesus. Have your way to Oh, let's keep our eyes on the prize. Hallelujah. Keep our hearts in tune with you, Lord. God, we love you this morning, Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, for what you're doing. We thank you for your word, God. Thank you for what you're doing behind the scenes, God. Thank you for your unseen hands that are moving. Hallelujah. And are working, God. When it seems like nothing's happening, you're bringing your will to pass. You're bringing all the things into place that need to be, God. Have your way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We thank you, Jesus. Take us from this place today, Lord. We pray for your anointing. We pray, Lord, for the guidance of your spirit, God. Touch us, Lord God. This week, Lord God. Have your way, God. In Jesus' name, we pray, God. And everything that we're believing you for. Have your way, God. And help our faith in you to increase. Strengthen us, Lord, today. In Jesus' name, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God.